What's up, guys? It's Summer and Summer on CT Bending Me. Another video for you guys. And yeah, I basically uh, finished all the emulation videos for you guys. I hope you enjoyed those. Had tons of fun doing them. Um, but there was plenty to cover. And I know that I kind of missed a few of them, but I'll go back to that in due time. Now, what brings me here today is basically something, you know, also right up my alley, something that I really enjoy and goes hand to hand with emulation, which is hacking, you know, and uh, hacking in itself, it's kind of very uh, iffy term because a lot of people associate hacking with uh, breaking stuff or breaking into stuff or thieving or stuff like that. It has a very bad connotation, but in gaming terms, specifically what draws me personally into it is the following. Hacking in the gaming scene is basically a, a different steps or process to achieve something. And that something is to be able to use existing hardware, a console that you own, and give it added functionality. Either be it by homebrew or running games of any sort, or giving it you know extra functionality. Something that was not there to begin with when you purchased the, the system. Now, in order to do this, of course, you need to... Um, either reverse engineer or you have to work your way through security uh, systems that are in place and that is the hacking part finding an exploit to be able to enter and inject code or be able to instruct that that um, close environment to do stuff that wasn't really meant for or at least functions to reactivate functions that were there like in uh, the case with the um, PS3 it happened you know with the uh, Linux and all that stuff, um, but basically, you find an exploit, something that's reliable enough, you go in, you inject code to be able to run, at a basic level, homebrew, that means that our, like, you know, um, small projects of things, uh, software in some form that uh, does other stuff that the console is not capable of doing, or not intended for. Now, once you do that, you can have a slew of things once the, the system is like wide open, as, as they say, and you can do a whole bunch of stuff. Now, the things that you need to, at least when it comes to a PlayStation 3 in specific, the first one you need, like I mentioned, is this guy right here, which is the PS3 exploit. This is the site that I went through specifically but it does have an order, an order in which you need to do these steps. Be warned, you know, you gotta go through, which, by the way, I'm gonna leave a video down below of this guy, Mr. Mario 2011, and out of the videos that I saw, because of course I went into this not knowing how to even approach it, because of course, and this I'm taking a, a, a step, a side note from a side note. The reason why I'm doing this to begin with I did not own the PlayStation 3. As you guys know, a lot of you that know me for a long time, I did not own the PlayStation 3. I borrowed at one time from a friend. I borrowed a system so I could play the greatest titles on there, the ones that I really missed, but I completely skipped over it. Now fast forward to the present, and I do have a PlayStation 3 within reach. This PlayStation 3, of course, is from Afro Soul Sun, who's in the military, and he purchased a PlayStation 4, so he has no use for it anymore. So we asked him if it was okay if he did this, and he said that it was it was fine. So now we have something that we had stored in a closet that wasn't doing anything, getting cobwebs and spider webs and all that nice stuff, and now I'm able to breathe new life into it because now I hack it. I give it some added functionality, and aside from playing PlayStation 3 games, you can play PlayStation 2, 1, and even PSP games. That's not including all the emulators and different stuff and video stuff, because there are video players and different things, different functions that you can add, you know, making this old system that's outdated by today's standard into something that's, you know, kind of like multimedia or multi-function or whatever. But that's me, and that's the reason why I'm doing this to begin with. Now, later on, I'm going to be doing some other more popular uh, stuff being hacked. Uh, of course, I'm not going to go through the Wii stuff because that's something I covered way back, even the Wii U. 
but I will be covering uh, some of the smaller stuff like the SNES Mini. I got to do a second part on that. Stay tuned for that. That's coming up later. Now, going back to this. Once you do the exploit, of course, you're going to need a place to um, download Homebrew and stuff like that. And this is the one right here, PSX Place. It seems to be the place to get the Homebrew packages that you need. You know, just scroll down and have some fun looking for the stuff that you might be interested in. And of course, uh, one mention here is specifically Rebug. Now, there are going to be different options for you to... Uh, install custom firmware into your uh, your system. I think there's one called Ferox, and there's a, a different. You know, there's a, a there's some variety in the custom firmware that that you can have as options. But I decided to stick with this with uh, Rebug. It's very very good, very stable. Even though my system has a um, a little quirk that I need to probably open it up later and check what it is, but um, it tends to like turn on and off randomly for some reason, so I need to check into that. But enough of that. You know, basically, I pointed out why I'm doing this. I'm pointing out that this is something that can be done. The only thing that you need to remember is that before you even begin considering doing this, you need to check through. That's why I'm linking the video again. Go to that video. I'm linking below and I'm gonna be leaving the links for these other sites so you can check them out firsthand and see what they offer but then go to the video and watch it a couple of times before you even decide doing it why because I've done different you know system hackings and stuff like that and even though there's always a, a, a danger a present danger that you might do something wrong there are always ways of you to kind of like backtrack and do some stuff to prevent from happening here there is a, a, a clear and present danger of you breaking the system that you can't come back from unless you take it to somebody who's going to unbreak it so the reason why i stress very much please before you decide to do this watch the video be absolutely certain that you're going to do everything step by step get all of the files required and then go in once you do that, you're going to see that it was worth the hassle. It takes a little while. It's not really a long process. It's just that you need to be very careful step by step. And you're going to see you're going to be having plenty of fun. So let me start showing you what I did to mine. All right, guys. So we are ready to rumble here. Um, this is the XMB, of course, of the PlayStation 3. You guys should know that by now. Um, right now, um, here going through the regular menu, regular XMB, you can see already that there's some things that you will not see on a regular PS3, like some homebrew and some tools and stuff that are specifically done or they work on only custom firmware. Now, this, of course, this is a, a system that is from uh, Afro Soul Sun, who's in the military right now, and he doesn't need the system because um, he has a PlayStation 4. So he left us this unit, and it was lying around. I said, what the hell? I'm kind of bored. I want to do something. And I said, since I didn't own the system to begin with, I said, what the hell? Let's do this. Let's hack it and have some fun with the, with the system. So here we are. After I proceeded to do the exploit, which I mentioned earlier, um, and please, I need to reiterate, follow the link I'm going to leave below so you know um, how to do this step by step. It is a little on the dangerous side because if you mess something up, you can you can actually brick your system. You know, it's not like the the old days of the Wii. And some other system that you would hack and you would have fail safes and stuff like that for you to, you know, just in case something went wrong, you could just, you know, load a backup of something that you did. In this case, you can do it up to a certain extent, but it's not fail proof. So you need to be very careful what you're doing and take it, you know, step by step until you get it done. Once you get it, get the hybrid, uh, firmware installed then basically after that you're almost basically home free 
but again one more time please check out the video and do it step by step if you intend to do this on your PlayStation 3 I didn't have much to lose to begin with and I kind of love the the risk of it and of course I love homebrew and emulation and stuff like that so I said what the hell but basically once you get here once you finish doing all the steps you're gonna land right here on a custom firmware and you're gonna have this guy right here which is a multi-man now before I go in and show you anything I have to disclaimer I have to mention that this unit since it's been it's a pretty old unit is a slim one of the first models that came out it's been stored for a long time it traveled even in boxes and stuff like that and it seems because I'm getting some random um, turning off of the system and it might actually happen while I'm recording if it happens you're gonna see some edits so you don't have to go through that but I'm gonna wing it I'm gonna wing it and hopefully it won't turn off now I need to do I'll probably do even a, a video on that repairing it but for the time being I'm just gonna run with it just to record this for you guys so as you can see I already before I go into multi-man I already installed but haven't set up yet the final burn alpha next emulator because I love final burn I've said it in videos and of course this is gonna give me all the Neo Geo games so yeah I'm, I'm gonna be happy having this I have R type dimensions installed to the um, internal I have Odin Sphere because hey you know you saw me doing the PS3 emulation and this game is amazing so I had to have it have it here too uh, Ace Combat as and Daytona of course I'm gonna run that in a little bit to show you but first first things first let's go into uh, retro arc I also have retro arc and another emulator here that I will be setting up and depending on how well they run I'll probably do some update videos on it and to run I have Gran Turismo this one I have installed directly to the internal um, and what I do is I go into multi-man and I set it I'm gonna go in and I'm going to set it whatever game that I wanna play so I can show it to you guys you're you're probably gonna see some blue screens because I have a weirdly set up thing to record this for you OBS for some reason is taking too much too many resources and it's messing up my recording so I had to use Rec Center believe it or not Rec Center 3 I have a Abram Media um, card and I need to use that but okay we're inside multi-man right now and this right here is the cover flow uh, screen or menu you can choose between different styles of course by pressing the R1 button R1 R2 as you can see different types of stylings but basically you keep scrolling and scrolling until you get to the XMB style this is not the official one this is the actual multi-man one and here you'll find a number of tools and tweaks and stuff that you need to activate to access different kind of services or, or things that you want functionality that you want for your system now the one that I'm gonna cover here basically is how the file manager works but first of all let's switch to multi-man because there's two versions of this and the latest revision is a MS one mm one and then the multi multi-man one that's the one that is the best one I guess to run um, your backups and stuff so let's go into file manager and this is one of the nicest things that this application has is a file manager with this you can actually go inside basically your internal drive not only explore but actually move stuff around kind of like how you would do it on a Windows operating system basically and here is where you're gonna see the magic happen this right here the dev HDD 0 is the internal drive it shows how much you have left and when you double click it you're gonna go in and it's gonna have all the folder uh, layout 
directories and stuff like that. Everything from the uh, Blu-ray to DVD and different things. The games, of course, the most important part. Here is where I have my installs. In my case, I have Dragon Crown, Gran Turismo 6, which takes a lot of space, believe me, and Soul Calibur 5. Just so I don't have to mount them, just run them straight up. I have also in the directories of PlayStation 2 in form of ISOs. I have these. Already installed, by the way. This is not my external. I'll show you my external in a minute. PlayStation 3 ISO I have under defeat, which I'm going to show you also. PSP, I don't think I have anything, no. Because everything else, basically, I am running through my external. My external is the one that has the USB triple zero. I go here, and almost basically the same layout as the internal, but, of course, I have many more other games because of course I have all the PlayStation 2 games that I wish to have for, for now and then we go to the PSP and we have many more there as well because those I'm gonna have fun with here ROMs of course because I have everything to run different emulators from here so I have everything in one place and yeah, some package files, which are the actual files that you're going to be installing when you um, start putting in emulators and stuff like that from the packet launcher in the XMB menu. So just wanted to show this to you guys. So once you go into the games... Throw them back to this. And from here, you choose what kind of menu you want to have. Uh, like I said, I kind of enjoy this one, the cover flow one. To me, it's visually appealing. So, once you have your games and stuff, all you have to do from here, from Multiman, is every time you go in, if you added something new to the disk, you just refresh. And it's going to show and download the cover for any additional game that you might have added to your drive. So these are basically the PlayStation 3 titles that I have running. You know, they're going to show both the internal and the external what you have. So not many on the PlayStation 3 side, but it, it doesn't really matter that much. I, uh, I didn't owned the system when it came out so I really didn't become a fan of, of many of the titles and many of them I played third party on the 360 so I'm now kind of rediscovering getting closer to the first party titles and stuff like that so anyways if you press down or actually no I think you can actually do it because it has different layers to the same menu like you can run here all the formats that you have PlayStation 1 titles etc but this is not the only game in town that does this um, basically there's two more launchers just like Multiman that has a similar um, let's say visual appeal I'm trying to see if I get the main one okay there's the main one so from here if you press system menu Yeah, this one will show only the PS3 ones, and you need to go like up and down to see what other platforms you have. And from here, you can actually launch one of the titles if it's from running from the external, or if you actually converted it into an ISO also. Which this is the ISO, for example. I have this shoot 'em up. So if I want to run this ISO. Uh, from the external without having to install it into the internal I just call up the game menu 
be sure that I am running it from external, mark it down here, and have a BD mirror. That's going to act like a, let's say, uh, kind of like the mirror uh, Blu-ray that's going to launch the game. But that is not the game that we want to run. We want to run this one. But in ISO form. Is this the ISO? Oh, this is the game. I want to specifically get the ISO one. Yep. Oh, this is going to be it. So once you set up the features, you just load up the game. Let's load it. And there it is. The game already mounted and ready to run. So we're going to launch it real quick. This game tends to switch to 720, so I might lose the signal and have to get out of full screen, maybe. Hopefully I won't. And of course, the quality is going to degrade a little bit. Because, of course, from 4K... There we go. It's a beautiful, beautiful shoot em up. Skip the cinematics. Kadadoris release. Love it. Of course, I'm gonna do a quick play because I'll have uh, extras video on this with some some of the games. Let's go. Yeah, let's go evolution. Bear with me, I don't think I'm gonna last that long, but... Different characters with different uh, ship types. It would be a cop-out to take, like, that, that thing that looks very powerful, but I'm gonna go with this character, because this character has the name Lilith, and looks pretty badass, and... It's pissed off, so... understand the text but in a shoot em up that's not really a bad thing now this one I'm actually running in 4k with uh, emulator and it looks absolutely beautiful. So as far as actually playing it to finish the game, I think I'm going to be doing that on the emulator. Of course you have different types of power-ups that charge with time. I love this one because this one like swats them on. Oh, where was my power? A little bit of clothes ripping going on there. There's the bomb.
here we go, the boss. All right. It's time to fight over clothes, I mean, honor. was that now let's go back to the menu as you saw it was running and it was running the ISO version uh, kind of didn't work the first time around because I was trying to run it as an uh, as a blu-ray but I was running the regular version which I hadn't configured to do that so that's why it did not work the first time around but of course there are also other ways and other um, emulators or loaders out there that you can use right now I have one that's not showing up I'll probably go to the package launcher real quick here and reinstall it which is Managans this is a, a really really cool uh, loader as well just like uh, Multiman, and it does use actually the Multiman software to do the actual launching, or at least it gives you that option. But the interface looks a lot better when it comes to showing your games, particularly the ones that are um, from other generations, like the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, and PSP ISOs. You're gonna see the covers are beautiful. It has a lot of customization in terms of like themes and stuff like that. And it actually shows you what it's doing. You just give it a little few seconds or minutes on, until it loads up the, the actual covers. And it gives you the actual covers of the game, not just the cover art, but the actual boxes as well. Now, right now, I don't think there's going to be, there's, I know there has to be a box for Soul Calibur, but it's still downloading, it's missing some of the cover art, but of course from here it gives you the option to filter or to add to your cover flow from all of the different platforms. I'm adding PlayStation 2 now, PlayStation 1, and PSP. So in the end, you have a humongous list of titles. Now let me do a small test here with each one before I let me show you first how they look. Plenty of incredible titles here to mess around with. 
There's some that still don't have the cover, but it's okay. No biggie. It'll take time for it to, you know, download all of them because there's a lot. There's a lot here to download. But the covers is not what's important. You need to let that go on on itself. Let's try a PlayStation 1 title first. I think you can also change the style of it. Let me see. Download covers. I can pass. I'm guessing this is it. So let's do a PlayStation 1. Since we're right here, let's do. Ooh, Dark Soccer 3. Uh, game menu. This one really doesn't need mounting or anything because there's an internal. As long as you activate Cobra in your options and the tools, um, the rebug tools, that's one of the things that you're going to have in your custom firmware. As long as Cobra is activated, this should work like immediately. So let's give it a try. it appears here as a PlayStation format disc not sure if it's gonna run like that because I don't see any cover for it yeah start let's go for it blue screen okay forgot to create a memory card for the PlayStation 1. Our stalkers, baby. I'm not even going to bother configuring anything just to show you guys that it works. Good, 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 good. It's gonna be a long video, especially with this loading. Oh, my God! round or at least try mother seriously Get out of here. Get out of here. Alright. So PlayStation 1, as you saw, worked pretty good. Now, I'm going to remove this from here. Go back to Mana Guns. Kind of like that one better than the actual Multi-Man when it comes to launching other titles for the PlayStation 3 titles 
I would go all the way with multi man, but for like having everything in the same place looking really nice, that uh, mana guns is pretty is pretty awesome. So of course we're not gonna wait for it to download the covers or set up the covers again. We're gonna go with a PlayStation 2 title. We have some Castlevania there, but actually I, I don't think I put in a lot of PlayStation 2 games into this. I think I have more of See, so I don't have to be scrolling so much. Let's eliminate the clutter here and go to whatever I'm gonna show you guys. In this case, PlayStation 2. So, yeah, I know I didn't have much. Berserk, Berserk is awesome. So I'm gonna leave it here with blue screens and all, and I am going to probably do an uh, update video to this one if I find a better way to show you the little things that I'm gonna be adding to this but because don't don't think for a second that I'm gonna leave it at this I am going to pack jam pack that uh, external drive with some more nice cool stuff and I haven't covered the emulators yet so I'll probably just end the video running at least this game yeah let's bring it on Daytona bring it bring it bring it Let's go for a spin. Yeah, baby, let's do this. Daytona. Holy crap! <laughs> easy, easy. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting there, getting used to the drift, oh!
Come on. Come on, that's who it is. Well, guys, it's gonna be it. I'm gonna leave it here. It's Hot I Had Seven signing off. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care, guys.